Well, brothers and sisters, today we are reintroduced to our all-knowing, our tender, loving, our empowering God. In the language of our psalm for today, he is our rock, our firm foundation, our fortress, from which, brothers and sisters, from which we are called to do life, to do life. And yeah, that might not be the most eloquent way to put it, but it gets down to the brass tacks of the matter. Our Lord God, he is our firm foundation from which we do life, real life. Without God, without abiding in him, when we're not spiritually anchored to our divine foundation, without this grounding, we might get by for a little bit. We might get by for a while, yeah. Okay, but then what? Then what? What happens when the big bad wolf comes knocking and huffing and puffing in the form of all the chaos and disappointments, tragedies, harmful behavior that can impact us in the world? Or how about the big bad wolf that comes in the form of our own prideful expectations and self-enslaving habits that can threaten our peace on a daily basis? Or the big bad wolf that shows up as subtle yet sharp demonic assaults, temptations, lies, accusations? What happens when the adversity, especially the compounding, layered adversity, rolls around or flies in quickly from left field? And we've just been doing life on our own terms, unmoored from our divine rock. What happens then? Well, quite simply, crumbling happens. It can be a quick collapse or it can be a slow, steady breaking apart. Either way, a crumbling that we are not meant for a crumbling that God does not delight in, but a falling apart that he will permit if we just stubbornly stand stationary and let the wrecking ball of adversity knock us over swing by swing. No, God does not delight in this. God does not desire this. So what are we meant for? Well, we're, we're meant to be a people on the move, a pilgrim people engaged in the dance of life, in the adventure of life, but not on our own rather with each other, with our companions, and not just willing progress to happen, but doing life from that divine foundation. When that happens, when that structure is set, no matter what kind of big bad wolf comes our way, crumbling becomes impossible. Personal destruction just, it doesn't happen. Even in the life of the martyrs, that, that's not defeat, that's victory. The victory of the cross, which is to be re-articulated to some degree in our own lives. And friends, we look at Jesus in our gospel today. Here's our Lord Jesus, and he's living this dance of life, the adventure of life in the midst of a heated situation. St. Luke describes this scene, Jesus in his hometown of Nazareth, Jesus filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. We hear a power that's truly unmatched by any demonic or worldly power. Here he is on the Sabbath, unveiling for the people with authority. He's unveiling for them who he is. The fact that he is the one spoken about in the prophets from of old. And Jesus boldly uses the scriptures as a means to shine a light on the prideful disposition of these citizens of Nazareth. And these educated citizens are not too pleased with any of this. This is what St. Luke reports. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove Jesus out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. This is what St. Luke tells us. Now, can you imagine, can you imagine just speaking the truth in love, to someone or to a group of people? And what if their reaction was, was of pure and lasting rage? Can you imagine, even, even if a small group of individuals literally stood up, came after you, and earnestly attempted to throw you off a cliff? Now, unless you're Iron Man or Thor or Black Widow, I think one would be naturally pretty alarmed and scared. 
perhaps we'd go into a damage control mode, trying our, trying our best to verbally de-escalate the situation. But now look at Jesus. He, do, he doesn't backtrack on what he said. Jesus speaks the truth in love. And when the big bad wolf approaches in the form of this crowd filled with rage, what happens? This is what St. Luke leaves us with today. Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. That's like a, that's like a ninja move. And let's just look closely here. Jesus, Jesus, he doesn't counter their rage with his own rage. No, rather cool, calm, collected. Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way, totally undermining their attack. And he does so with confidence. He does so filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. He does so grounded, totally stabilized in his relationship with the Father. And that's it, brothers and sisters. That's the key. Union with the Father and the Holy Spirit. So paramount for Jesus. This divine relationship was always his starting point. And then came the mission. And so it goes for us, brothers and sisters. Every positive habit, every meaningful and loving action that we'd like to willingly manifest in our lives it's got to start not from our own weak, fallible foundation of me, myself, and I. No, it's got to start from God. He, he's our rock, our firm foundation. We're called to start with that prayerful relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. If it doesn't come from that base, that divine foundation, drawing from our Lord's grace and power, then in the long run, not only does our mission suffer, but the process of personal crumbling runs its course, inevitably. Not maybe, but inevitably. We need that stability to live, and more importantly, to thrive. Who just wants to live? We're called to thrive. And we look at the prophet Jeremiah in our first reading. Our Lord, what, is, what does he do? He offers Jeremiah an avenue for him to do life and to find himself and to help people, help a lot of people, for Jeremiah to love in a very powerful way. And here's the avenue, this direction that God offers. Gird up your loins, God says to Jeremiah. Gird up your loins, stand up, and tell the people everything that I command you. And I, for my part, have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall against the whole land. And our Lord goes on. He says, they will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Okay, we have this firm, firm tone from our Lord. And here's, okay, a little pressure for Jeremiah to perform, to jump into action. But look, God's not asking Jeremiah to do the impossible. Ultimately, God's asking Jeremiah to trust him. And when Jeremiah is firmly anchored in God's love for him, that same devastatingly beautiful and powerful love that St. Paul appraises in our second reading today. When Jeremiah trusts and allows himself to be anchored in God's love for him, then anything is possible. Anything. And that's bad news for any opposing power, any venom, any form of adversity. And before offering this avenue for Jeremiah, God, at the very beginning, of our first reading sets the tone. And here's God cementing the foundation, if you will, for Jeremiah and for us. These words, this truth is for us today, brothers and sisters. Before I formed you in the womb, says God, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. We've been chosen, brothers and sisters. You are being formed. You have been chosen. You are known. You've been loved into existence and placed on this particular path to follow. And no matter what our vocational path is that we're called to lead as beloved daughters and sons of the Father, as soldiers of Christ, we've been thrown into action not to cower, not to crumble, not to throw in the towel and to concede to the opposition. No, we're, we're called to fight, to fight for the good. And in so doing, like, like Jeremiah, to discover who we really are and what real, holy, righteous power we have access to 
when we do life from that divine rock. Brothers and sisters, we, you and me, fellow Christians, we are forces to be reckoned with. God did not bring us into this world to be wilting lilies. We're forces to be reckoned with. And we're called to engage in that act of true love, being our brother's keeper, being our sister's keeper, going that extra mile to lead others back to their divine foundation, which is the same as ours, our divine rock, our Lord God who loves us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us.